unidentified object off the hind quarters. Bigger boot? But how? Did you miss me? Hello and welcome back to some more of the Special Squarepants movie where last time we played through the final sliding level of the game, googly eyes and smelly knickknacks, no more sliding for the rest of the game, and today we will be playing through Dennis Strikes Back. Remember when we played, uh, Names Dennis when I, when I compared him to the Warden Eternal? You may be wondering why I did that. Well, because in Halo 5, for as much as I love that game, and for as much as the campaign's gameplay is good, not the story, the campaign story is awful, but the campaign's gameplay and level design are excellent, this, the, the Warden Eternal is by far the weakest part of it, because it's just, even if it's fun to fight him once, eventually you're going to get sick of him fighting him over and over and over again. Um, same thing here, because Dennis is back again, and guess what? We have to defeat him the exact same way as we did the last time. Here's how you win. Step one, go onto the arm. Step two, um, reflect the fish back, that because he's going to throw an army of fish at you. All you got to do is just reflect it right back at him. Um, so just stand here, wait for him to throw fish your way, which he'll do eventually, and then just reflect it right back at him like that. And rinse and repeat, over and over again, until eventually- now, admittedly, it can be a little frustrating because the game, as we established, doesn't actually like to respond to your inputs all the time. Um, but if you want a quick laugh, you can kind of- you can admire, because we're standing on a human right now. This is the back of- it's supposed to be the back of David Hasselhoff from the movie, but apparently he didn't want to be associated with this terrible game, and I don't blame him, because this game, oof. Um, so yeah, the, uh, well, that's it, the, the game, sorry, the, the, this supposed to be the back of him, so you can see a really, really bad human model, the, like, this is a, this is just an awful, awful human model, I don't even know, just, anyway, yeah, so the reason, by the way, you may be wondering why are we on the arm of, why are we on the, the, the arm, and the, the, the simple answer is because after you take away certain amounts of his health, he'll send an enemy after you, but the enemy AI in this game is so awful that it, it will not, it literally will not chase you down if you stand on the arm. It just, it just doesn't do it. It just, they just stay in the middle. So yeah, just stand on the arm, reflect the fish back at him again and again and again until eventually he loses all of his health and then that will be the level over. Just like that. Now, where were we? Wait, Dennis. Uh, look out behind you. That's it. I'm through messing around. See you later, fools. Huh? Ah! After many adventures, our heroes arrive back home. But it is a much, much different place from the one they left. Where there once was rolling green fields and bustling city streets, there is now Planktopolis, a city as dark and twisted as the heart of its teeny tiny ruler. All of Bikini Bottom's familiar faces are now covered by unfashionable mind-controlling buckets. And perhaps most horrible of all, King Neptune is at the Krusty Krab too. Preparing to fry Mr. Krabs. Bikini Bottom's only hope rests with a small yellow sponge and a pink sea star. Can they survive the dangers of Planktopolis? Ooh, let us hope so. Plankton's bucketheads are being controlled by those statues. If we destroy them, we can break his control over them. SpongeBob, you've got enough Goofy Goober tokens for me to teach you a new ability. You have a special power that you can use. Imagine being so lazy that you literally reuse the same death animation for Dennis twice. Because in the movie... He, he, he doesn't die and come back to life. He, he gets hit by the, by the boat, and that's it. That's him dead. 
But in the game, he gets hit by the boat once, somehow ends up on the bottom of a boot, comes out of the boot again, and dies by the boat again. Because they just gave up, apparently. Oh, whatever. This game sucks. You know it sucks. But, hey, we un we finally unlocked the, the, the one last ability for Spongebob to use. Uh, yes, you have the power of music. You can pull R to launch a sonic wave from your guitar. The power of music. You can steer the sonic wave right to where you want it to hit. We did it, Mindy. We went to Shell City and got Neptune's cloud. Oh, SpongeBob, I knew you could do it. But my father is already at the Krusty Krab 2 on the other side of Planktopolis. Oh no! There are bucket heads everywhere! How will we get through? I found out that Plankton is controlling the bucket heads using those giant statues. If we destroy them, we can break his control. Let's get it on. <sighs> so, tell me if this sounds familiar. Did that look familiar? I'll do it again. Does it look familiar now? Yep. It's the cruise bubble from Battle for Bikini Bottom, except this time, it's a guitar sonic wave. Because, of course it is. I mean, to be fair, it does make sense within the context of the game, because obviously, the way the game ends, um, you know, it kind of makes sense for him to have this ability. But still, it's just like, don't even try to pretend that this, that that's not... It's not just a rub of the cruise bubble. Anyway, this is what I've been saving my upgrade points for, because now we can upgrade... When upgrade allows Sponchos... Sponchos? Spongebob's Macho Sonic Wave to home in on this target, pull R to home in on the current target, because they just have no faith... They just think you suck at video games, but we're gonna upgrade it anyway, because I'm, I'm about sick of this game, so... I will happily upgrade that. Next, we're going to use our final upgrade for Patrick's throwing ability. Because we cannot get the... We, we, we can't get the Up Chocolate Creek ability, ability, uh, we, we can't complete the Up Chocolate Creek task without Patrick's thing. Anyway, I wasn't planning on doing this now, because I, I originally planned on doing it during this level, but because this is, this is gonna be, this would be a, this will be a pretty short video otherwise, I'm actually gonna do all the backtracking stuff now and get it out of the way, because the next level's really long, and this is gonna take us a while, so, um, we're gonna do everything, everything we missed, we now have every ability we possibly need to clean it all up, so we're gonna go back, starting with level 2, I'm Ready Depression, the cleanup that we missed, because technically we could have done this, well, okay, maybe not that, um, we, we only need Patrick's throw ability in order to, um, um, okay, that's some quality game design right there, we only need Patrick's throw ability to do this, but we need the super throw upgrade in order to actually reach these things, so hold down the right trigger and then release to throw it at any one of the buttons, and then that will unlock the door, and create a series of platforms that allow us to reach the next section of the level. And from here, it's just going to be a basic little platforming uh, test. Well, okay, I say basic, but just, we get, we got to jump across the marshmallows while also dodging the spinning thing. It's actually okay. Let's um, let's actually land where we jump. Game that that'd be great. Thanks. Okay, so um, it's just you know, it, it, it's actually a pretty fun and challenging platforming challenge uh, in stark contrast to some of the other things in this game. So I'm actually I'm actually a big fan of this. It's a shame that we have to do it so late in the game, but you know, it's backtracking, it's annoying, whatever. Uh, just a little, a little bit further to go for now. The, the thing that's going to screw you up here is, of course, going to be that rotating cylinder in the middle. As long as you stay one jump ahead of the bread line, which I... All... Uh, yep, okay. Uh, I, I don't know why I pressed X, but I did. And now we have to wait... Oh, this is my favorite part, by the way. My favorite part of this task is that even that when you die, you have to wait for the marshmallows to come all the way back here. So you just got to sit here and wait until eventually the marshmallows catch up with you. I, I gotta say... That's some quality game design right there, to make the player sit here and wait before they can try the task again. Like, honestly, I mean, this this deserves Game of the Year every year, is what this game deserves. It's just truly high-quality game design, is what we're dealing with here. Anyway, yeah, just straight shot to the end. The only thing that's going to up is going to be that thing in the middle, so you just got to learn to jump over it as it approaches. And then you are good to go up here and grab yourself the Goofy Goober token. But we're not done yet, because now we have to do the Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge. Now, you may be wondering, what's the Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge? Well, you know all those times we saw a little mini stage throughout the course of all the levels? Well, 
It requires the Sonic Wave guitar, as I'm sure you can guess. And what do you have to do? Well, let me tell you. It's super fun. First off, it spawns you in as Patrick, despite needing to play as SpongeBob. Once again, this game, quality game design. Let's jump up in here, switch to SpongeBob, and then wall jump your way up to the top. So now what we have to do is stand on this little mini stage, activate the Sonic Guitar Challenge, and now we have to fly the Sonic Wave through all the rings. The Sonic Wave will be launched automatically when the challenge begins. Are you ready to take the challenge? As ready as I'll ever be. There's the path for the first one, and really, it's just a matter of getting a hang of the cruise bubble controls. I'm not gonna call the Sonic Wave because it's that's it's just the cruise bubble. Um, it's just that the, the challenge gets much easier once you know where all the rings are. So that's why I recommend watching watching me do them first, so that you know where all the rings are. Then you can prepare yourself because a lot of the challenge there is just based on oh you don't know where the next ring's gonna pop up. Well, too bad for you, friend. So yeah, that's that. Um, next up, what are we going to do now? We're going to head back to, uh, Bubble Boy and Baby Hunt and do, you guessed it, the Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge. Now, this one does, I believe, spawn us right next to it, but is it going to spawn us as Patrick or Spongebob? Because I'm guessing it's going to spawn us as Patrick. <laughs> yup. That's, that's this game for you. Alright, well, let's, fortunately, is a, like, I don't get it. Is the portal hero right there? I get that. But, like, you, just, it wouldn't be that hard to just change to Spongebob. Or to, or to switch you initially to Spongebob. Whatever. Again, I recommend watching this first so you can see where all the rings are, and then doing it for yourself.
Once again, not much I can- there, there's no advice that I can give, because it's all- it's either you know how to control the cruise bubble, or you don't. But if you know how to control the- the, I guess, sonic wave in this game, then there's no difficulty with controls, it's just a matter of knowing when the rings- where the rings are gonna pop up, and that's why I show you that full run and then you can just try it for yourself. Anyway, now we move on to, uh, now that we're men, and we got a lot of cleanup to do here. There's no Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge, but there are two treasure discs we have to get. So first things first, we're gonna uh, we're gonna warp to here, monster, nice monster. As soon as you load into the level, turn the camera around, and now all you gotta do is just uh, use the Sonic Wave Guitar to hit any one of these TNT barrels, and it'll cause a chain reaction, which will then cause a treasure disc to spawn right up there. So now all we have to do is just jump out to it like so. Okay, so once you get to this point, you have to uh, use the Sonic Wave Guitar and then steer it straight at this thing. And once you destroy it, the treasure disc will spawn at the pillar in the center. Just like so. I don't know why the camera is spawning facing this way. Just jump out to the platform, and there's the treasure chest for you to collect. Now all we have to do, the only the only level left that has any kind of cleanup whatsoever before we can continue with the main game, is to head back to Shell City dead ahead, and warp actually to the start of the level. Because we do have a Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge to do, but we can't do it until we do some a little bit of, a little bit of setup. So I'll explain what kind of setup we have to do in order to get this last treasure chest and complete the final Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge of the game. You know, the more I look at the skybox of this level, the worse it gets. It just... It looks so bad. So in front of the license plate that says Heavy Iron, pick up the watermelon and throw it, power throw it, at the piece of toast in the background. Yes, this is something you have to do to get the treasure chest. Please don't ask me why. Now from that point, you just gotta platform your way through the rest of the level. Do not warp to the next location. You have to physically go through the rest of the level. Yes, it's annoying. Yes, it sucks. But, unfortunately, we have to manually platform our way to the end. Because if, if we don't if we don't platform our way there and we just warp there, the toast will reset. So we have to do this. We, we have to straight up platform our way to the end. Uh, on the bright side, we have the power throw now. So that'll make... It'll make dealing with these things significantly less frustrating. So, you know, that's, that, that's one positive, I guess. When you eventually reach this point in the level, what you're going to want to do is now you have to switch to SpongeBob. Uh, with the portal hero. And then we're going to jump up on top of this... Uh, thing, and then double jump up to this ledge, like so, and then we can just defeat all the enemies that, are, that pop up right here with anything that you have in your in, in your arsenal, be it the bubble ball or just a standard uh, standard karate spin. Either way, it doesn't really matter. All all you really all you have to do is just oh that happened. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's try to do this. There we go. All you have to do is just get on top of the trampoline over here to bounce your way up onto the TV. Okay, well to the, to the underside of the TV like this, and then from here. Use your Sonic Wave ability to hit that piece of toast in the back. No, I'm not kidding. You have to hit this piece of toast like that. And in case you haven't figured out what we're doing here, we are pushing down all the pieces of toast throughout the level. That's two so far. There's one more we have to hit. And once we hit all three, then that will be our treasure chest. Uh, our treasure chest will spawn in. So where's the third one, you may ask? Well, you just got to hop down from this point to land on the Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge like so. Um, and the reason we need to do it with the Sonic Wave, Sonic, Wave, Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge is because there's no... The the Sonic Wave doesn't last long enough by default to reach the third piece of toast. So, and because every time you go through a ring, it resets the timer for the for the Sonic Wave. Um, we need to do it this way so that we can actually reach it in time. So from here, after you go through this ring, you'll have, you'll have plenty of time to reach this toast in the background. So just head straight for it. And you'll hit it. We lost the Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge, but it doesn't matter because the, the treasure chest has just spawned in right next to the portal here of Switcheroo. And here is our treasure chest right here. So now all we have to do is just complete the Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge for good, or for real this time. And then that will be all of the cleanup throughout the, remain throughout the previous levels in the game uh, done.
Okay. So that is, without a shadow of a doubt, the hardest challenge of all of them, because it lasts six million years. It has a lot of twists and turns you cannot possibly foresee. It has a lot of really tight spaces. It literally forces you to fly into a goddamn wall, which you have no way of knowing it's going to open or not. And then it just loops back around at the end anyway, so... Long and short of it is, that is insanely hard, and you should feel proud of yourself if you manage to conquer that. But here's the good news, is that we now have everything completely cleared out. 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, all of these levels, we've gotten all the Gofugu tokens, we've gotten all the treasure chests that are available for us to collect, which means now we can continue on with the rest of the game, and continue and get it all 100% first try. We have one platforming level, one driving level, and one pretty cool boss fight before this game is done. So that'll be it for now, thanks for watching, stay tuned, and I'll catch you all tomorrow for some more of the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Goodbye!